We continue with economies of scale. The last class we talked about internal economies of scale. Today we need to talk about external economies of scale and these economies. So for external economies of scale, external economies of scale is a cost advantage of fair of fairness in that industry are enjoying because the industry is becoming uh, the industry is expanding. The cost advantage fans in an industry are enjoying because the industry is getting bigger. That is what external economies of scale is. So yeah, these are called benefits of fans that enjoy due to it, due to the expansion in the industry. So all the fans in that industry are enjoying the cost benefit because the industry itself is expanding. External economies of scale is likely to occur if any industry, if an industry is concentrated in a certain region. So before, uh, before, before the industry can really enjoy external economies of scale, it would have meant that the industry is set up, is concentrated in a particular region, like Tripoli. So oh, all schools are in Tripoli. That means all the schools you're talking about in India are in, in Tripoli. So that means the schools in Tripoli will be able to enjoy external economies of scale. That's the same for this. That's what we're talking about here. That's not what concentration is here. So what are the benefits fairs that are called? What are the benefits an industry will be able to enjoy when it is concentrated in a certain region, number one? Skill level. Due to concentration in the industry in a certain region, it will become easier to build up labor force for such industry with lower cost of training. Since all schools are situated here in Tripoli, it might mean that it might mean that Enough teachers, a lot of teachers will be available in Tripoli. And the training for teachers in Tripoli will be less because there are much more teachers available. Do you understand? Yes. Skill labor here. Yeah. So because the industry is here, so all the supply for labor will come down here. As a result, the training cost will become cheaper because you're going to have more teachers. Okay? So, infrastructure. Due to concentration of an industry in a particular region, the infrastructure needed to suit industry might be provided because schools are concentrated or are situated in Tripoli. So the government might ensure that there's good road network, the government might ensure that there's electricity, the government might ensure that the bridges are there, the government might ensure that road or traffic waters, traffic police are always available within that region. So they are enjoying this cost benefit because they are what they are in a particular region. Do you get the point here? So we are using school as an example here. So because all the schools are in Siraj, it's my it's my lead to having good security in Siraj. Which means schools will not be paying for security anymore. See that for it. See that for it. It might mean that schools will not be paying for security anymore. As a result of that, the average cost of production will what? Will fall. Is it clear? Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. yes. The third one. Access to supplies. An established industry in the region will encourage suppliers to set up closer to such industry. Now that schools, our schools are in Siraj, bookshops that supply books, uh, photocopy machines, of all these things that schools need might move closer to Siraj because they know in Siraj this is where they can really get their business done. Do we get it? Yes. Because the industry is established, it might, it might lead to suppliers coming closer to where the industry is situated. Do we get it? So we won't need, as, as a fair, we will not need to, we will not need to start paying transportation costs to get our supplies, or take time to get the supplies, because the supplies are already here. Do we get what we're saying here? Yes. If countries, if industry is situated, if an established industry is situated, in the region, it will allow suppliers to move closer to that industry because they know that all the they, all the things they have to supply are within a region. So it becomes they will come they come closer to that industry. That is what we're talking about. Access to suppliers. So it will be difficult for the individual firms to find it, it will be difficult for individual firms for supplies. Supplies becomes closer to them so they can get easy access to their suppliers because they are all concentrated in a specific region. The fourth one, similar businesses in the area. 
for similar businesses in the area because in the in, because the industry is situated in a, in a particular region, all the firms in that in region might cooperate together, might do things together, they might put resources together, they might put finance together for research and development. Whatever that is going to make the industry, make them to have gain, to make them to be to make them profitable, they might do it together, they might cooperate to become profitable. Yes. Do you get the point here? Yes. Because these are all schools. Maybe schools need to do research. A school will not do it alone. Other schools will do it with them. I need you to repeat this with similar business in Delhi because I have not the time to it. Okay. One thing, when we talk about similar businesses in the area, we are using school as an example. So there is this school and other schools situated in Tripoli. So because all these schools are situated in Tripoli, they might work together, they might cooperate, they might do things together to make their business grow. That's what we're talking about. Now that they are together within the same region, they can do things together to make their business to grow. Yes, That's uh, what we're talking they about. help each other. Yeah, Okay. To, to make the business profitable, to make the industry profitable. And if the industry is profitable, the business is profitable. Because the business, the combination of the business, the combination of the firms, make the industry. Is it clear? Now, these economies of scale. Remember these economies of scale. Remember when we talked about our U shape, right? We said here is economies of scale, right? Yes. Going forward like this is what? These economies. These economies, right? Because the average cost starts increasing. So when the average cost starts increasing, there's these economies of scale. Please look at the board. If the average cost starts increasing, there's what? These economies of scale. So what is this economies of scale? This economies of scale is a cost, is, is, a, is an increase in the cost of in the, as an increase in the cost in the average cost of production as a result of expansion. So the average cost of producing continues to rise when you are what increasing your output. When you increase further, your average cost increases. That is this economies of scale. Do you get the point here? Yes. You are increasing your output, that means you are expanding your business at the same time. Your average cost starts increasing. So, what are the causes of these economies of scale? Number one, bureaucracy. For bureaucracy, we said this occurs when too much resources are used in administration, as this will lead to an increase in average cost. When you talk about bureaucracy, it means we're talking about the administration, people that are in charge. Listen, please. We're talking about people that are in charge of the industry. Yes. When they use a lot of resources, this will lead to an increase in average cost. And most of the time, what really causes bureaucracy? What causes bureaucracy is that people that are in that administration do not understand how it works. So they don't know much about the industry, but they are there because of influence. So decisions they take might not be good enough for the industry, which is affecting the firms. Do you understand what we're talking about? Yes. The second is of skill is as a result of administrators using too much resources. So if administrators are using too much of resources, it will increase their average cost of production. Why would this happen? It could happen because those in administration do not understand how the operation works. Because they don't understand how the operation works, they take decisions that are poor for the, for the firm. So this will increase the average cost of production. Two, communication problems. As black you know, as businesses become becomes bigger and larger, they have more workers, they have more uh, more outlets in different regions. So because the number of workers continue to increase, the number of outlets continue to increase, this might lead to slower communication. So communication might become slower. This is a school, right? Yes. Let's assume this school has another branch in Miswata, another branch in Nigeria, another branch in, in different places in Libya. It might be difficult for communication to pass across so fast. So because communication is not being passed across so far, so fast, it might lead towards these economies of scale. Do you get what we're talking about here? Can we finish the five minutes? Do you get the point here? Do you understand what we're talking about communication problem? As businesses become large, they might find it difficult to pass information across to everybody. So this might lead to Communication problem. Yes. That's the economy of scale. 
The third one, lack of control. Because the business becomes too big, coordination becomes difficult. You cannot control each department anymore. That's what we're talking about coordination here. Yes. Look at it. I said, well, especially we need to form coordination between departments of an organization. As a result, Fed might need to increase the number of supervisors needed to rise in the average cost. Because the Fed has become bigger, you might not be able to coordinate as you used to do. So you might need more supervisors. Employing more supervisors will increase the average cost of production. The company becomes so big. Yes, yes. So if the company becomes bigger, coordination becomes difficult. That means you cannot control very well. So you need to employ more supervisors. Employing more supervisors, you have to pay them, yes or no? Yes. So that will increase the average cost of production. Is it clear? Yes. The last one, distance between senior staff and poor workers. When the business becomes so big and large, there might be layers for layers of employment, layers of management. So we have different managers. So it might be difficult for employees to meet their managers the way they used to meet their managers. What I'm saying is this: when the business is having just 100 workers and maybe 10 managers, but now the business has grown, has expanded to having like 500 workers. So if it has 500 workers with maybe 200 employees, 200 managers, it won't be the same way that it used to be when each manager or each worker can talk to the manager. So there will be a gap between managers and workers. Get the point here, please. Yes, yes, sir. If a company becomes so big, the number of managers will reduce, but the number of workers might increase. Yes, the, the contract between the, the connection, the relation between the employees and the managers will, will not be there. Yes, will be we will be far away. Yes. So this might demotivate workers. And if it demotivates workers, productivity will fall. And if productivity falls, the average cost of production will, will fall. Is it clear? Yes. Is it clear, please? Yes. 